Hello, everyone. My name is Ralph Carter. I am a Chief Network Solutions Architect with CDI. And today I'm going to show you three use cases that are uh, commonly requested by customers around uh, ServiceNow, uh, IT service management, and integrations with different tools such as VMware and Cisco cloud management platforms um, and configuration management platforms like Ansible and show you how these various platforms can work together with software-defined network fabrics like Cisco ACI and VMware NSX to basically achieve business outcomes. Uh, outcomes around um, agile application provisioning, automated day two application uh, security operations, and a simplified disaster recovery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a couple slides to kind of show you what I mean by those three different use cases and, and how they work. So uh, to start off, let's go through the application provisioning here. Uh, so what you would have is your typical IT service management, right? So you would get, you would have your requester, they would be uh, maybe somebody part of the application development team or an IT admin or an end user, and they would go to this ServiceNow portal, right? And they would request something, right? Something could be, uh, I want to request a light bulb change in my office, um, or maybe I want to provision an application, or I need a server, uh, or I need a I need a, a group of virtual machines with a load balancer, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever's in that blueprint or that catalog uh, to be able to provision, right? Your your t-shirt sizes. So in this particular case, um, this individual requests this service. It would go through a formal approval process. That approval process can include the um, requester's uh, manager or IT, right? Somebody has to make, make that approval uh, after review. So this would actually integrate with uh, a cloud management platform such as VMware uh, Be Realize Automation, uh, or, or it could go, it could work with uh, Cisco Cloud Center, right? Uh, there's different solutions that could be integrated with ServiceNow. And through various security financial policies and, and workflows and uh, integrating with different tools, we would provision something like uh, some kind of virtual machine. Um, in this case, we, you know, we would uh, select a provision of virtual machine or an application, and we would choose where are we deploying this workload to, right? We could deploy it to Amazon, AWS, to Azure, or maybe we're deploying it on-prem. On-prem could be a Cisco ACI uh, environment, uh, it could be a VMware NSX or traditional vSphere environment. And part of this provisioning process, we're configuring the application, leveraging different enterprise tools. We're configuring, you know, Apache and, and uh, MySQL or SQL Server, or whatever, or load balancer. We're deploying these applications um, on, onto this VM or group of virtual machines. Um, and we're also deploying this virtual machine in some kind of network, right? Network and security. Now, the reason why I, I put these into consideration here is because we're also doing something like updating the CMDB, right, with what network we deployed the virtual machine into. So in this particular case, um, maybe we are leveraging software-defined networking like uh, ACI or NSX, and we're placing this virtual machine into a VXLAN, right? Maybe we don't want to be limited by the 4,000 or so VLANs um, that traditionally limit you where you know, people put multiple applications on the same VLAN. Um, and in this case, you know, we're, we don't have a 4,000 limit, right? We have maybe, if we're leveraging VXLAN, we have 16 million. So there's no reason why you can't tie your application, which is a group of virtual machines that make up your application, um, why we cannot tie it to a particular VXLAN. And then we're recording that VXLAN information in the CMDB so that we could call on it or reference it later, which I'll show you uh, in the next couple slides. Um, and we're also recording the security here, right? So security meaning, for example, if we're doing VM or NSX, um, we're placing it into, you know, a uh, a new security group in NSX, or a group of secure, or different security groups, like maybe the web tier goes into a web security group, um, the app tier goes into the app security group, right, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but we're also recording that in the CMDB, and the CMDB is our uh, pretty much real-time source of truth. Okay, 
So in this particular case, the request gets um, completed, right? Um, and the, the ticket gets updated and closed pretty much. And the, the reason why I'm showing this, right, you know, what are the benefits of this particular approach, this integration where you're tying in the service now as that front end with the cloud management platform, with the, you know, the different infrastructures, software-defined infrastructures, whether it's AWS, Azure, or, or something on-prem, um, you know, we are, as a result, automating the application provisioning. Right, we are incorporating different business processes. We're integrating IT disciplines. Right, so for example, you know, getting the the network, the security, the compute, the storage, you know, teams together in a room uh, to deploy something sometimes can take longer than expected. Right, sometimes when in larger enterprise co uh, companies, it may even take three months to get some kind of workload out there. But by collaborating and 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 working through and, and defining uh, different blueprints, right? Maybe different T-shirt sizes for deploying an application uh, or a three-tier application or two-tier whatever, um, and also uh, collaborating on what those networks of security and et cetera policies could be. We can then uh, call on that blueprint and deliver that application in, in a much more uh, in a more agile uh, fashion. So we're definitely promoting IT agility and. But the big thing here, which is critical to this whole process, is the CMDB, right? So we are enhancing the CMDB with this critical information about this application, um, you know, as far as the networking and security, et cetera, okay? So um, what's the second use case, right? So now we have all that rich uh, information in, in that CMDB. So what can we do with it? So for example, here, we go back to our IT service management, um, we have the same requester or maybe somebody from that department uh, and now they go into ServiceNow and they fill out a security service request form as an example, right? And what happens is I'm able to correlate that requester, right? His, his department or him uh, or he or her, um, um, their actual request, right? The application that they previously uh, provisioned right I'm able to correlate which one that is so maybe they provisioned the prod financial application right so in this particular case I'm giving them the, the capability of clicking on their application and maybe they want to make some um, security modifications maybe part of the application provisioning phase um, we put them into a, like an any any um, unrestricted um, rule set, right? So with NSX, um, you know, we maybe put them into security groups and those security groups just, you know, have a full open access. Uh, or maybe if it's Cisco ACI, you know, we put them into different endpoint groups that were part of a bridge domain or different bridge domains, whatever, but they have any, any access and there's no, there's no, um, uh, you know, security enforcement. But in this particular case, you know, if I was to use uh, as an example, NSX, I already know what security groups, okay, I place them in, right? So I'm correlating them, I'm looking uh, to the CMDB to see this particular prod financial application, what security groups is a part of? And I'm giving the end user, the requester, those options in the dropdown. So I know that part of the application provisioning phase, I place them into the prod finance web group and the prod finance app group and the prod finance DB group. And I'm giving them the capability of modifying security for that application. So in this particular case, um, they're selecting source, uh, the web, destination app, and I'm enabling HTTP and HTTPS and I'm allowing that. Uh, maybe another row would be uh, the app to the database. I'm allowing uh, TCP3306, which is my SQL. And, you know, given the capability of submitting that. So now this would uh, create a ticket. Obviously, it would be routed for approval. You know, the uh, manager or the IT admin would go through some formal approval process, review to make sure that this requester's, um, you know, the, the, the request, the security requests uh, comply with policy or, or, you know, that it's okay or that he didn't make any mistakes. Uh, etc. And then once this is approved, that can kick off a process, for example, in Ansible, right? So in this case, um, you, we, would, we would put all the programming logic in Ansible in the different playbooks. Um, this would most likely be um, something like Ansible Tower or AWX. 
And from the ServiceNow standpoint, we are passing those form fields like source, destination, service, action. We're passing those as variables to through a RESTful API called to Ansible Tower. And Ansible Tower, or AWX in this case, is running specific templates or job te jobs uh, with those variables and running logic, etc., to you know through its provisioning process to deploy the firewall rule. In this case, it would be an NSX uh, deployment. Um, it would provision that firewall rule into NSX Manager, right? NSX Manager would write that rule to its distributed firewall, right? Uh, part of the process could be validation and testing, which would be all um, configured, uh, created within Ansible through uh, different logic, um, different Python modules that maybe are created to, to make that happen, whatever the validation and testing needs to be, uh, just as if it was a human sitting here and making a decision to create these firewall rule sets, right? Uh, and then the benefit here is that I'm now updating the CMDB, so I have um, uh, pretty much a source of truth updated with information, uh, and I'm completing the request. Now, the benefits of this particular scenario is that I'm automating my micro-segmentation policy, right? So I'm not, I don't have to log into NSX Manager um, and create those firewall rule sets. I can provide that experience through that IT service management portal, right, uh, in, this, in this particular example. So I'm automating micro-segmentation. I'm definitely accelerating time to execution, and we have a lot of customers that um, you know, it takes them a, a, a longer than usual to kind of implement micro-segmentation or implement security for east to west. Um, but keep in mind, this also is not limited for east to west. This can also be applied for north-south. Uh, that same rule um, in, in the same or different format can be applied to some north, uh, northbound firewall, whether it's Cisco or, or, um, or, or Palo Alto, for example. Um, you know, Ansible can connect to, to various platforms. Uh, but we're definitely accelerating time to execution here. Uh, and the other big thing is that we're tracking application security changes. And the, 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 the cool thing about this is that, um, you know, how many times have you walked into a network and you looked at a firewall or a switch and you have all these lines of configuration and you don't know what, you know, what, what they're actually doing and, and what application, you know, they're affecting. So a lot of times when you go into this network, you're going to look at these these firewall rules, and you're not going to want to touch them because you're worried that it might break something. So in this particular case, because we're tracking the security changes that are applied for this particular application, if this application is ever decommissioned in the future, we know exactly which rule IDs, right, or which contracts um, in ACI or NSX, whatever it is, we know exactly which ones to remove for our housekeeping, right? Um, and also, if you know we ever get audited, and uh, if you ever get audited, or you want to run a report to find out exactly which firewall rules were applied to which application, right? Uh, you can do that here within ServiceNow's uh, reporting, right? Uh, and the other thing is here, which is huge, is that we're integrating the CMDB, right, the Configuration Management Database. So another use case I'm going to show you here, based on that information that we uh, populated um, in, in the CMDB through our first two use cases, right, um, automating disaster recovery. So in the same way, I have my app requester, uh, but in this case, you know, they select a different dropdown or a different form. In this case, would be a DR uh, event request form. And again, I'm able to correlate which application they own or, you know, which applications are available. In this case, they're going to select Prod Financial um, and give them the option of conducting a DR event. But when I do the DR event, I don't want to affect other applications, right, uh, in that data center. And because I'm able to tie that application to a VXLAN and I'm, and I'm allocating a VXLAN to this application, which is I'm also... Uh, allocating an IP subnet dedicated to this application that sits behind a VXLAN backed port group in this case, right? Um, I'm not disrupting anything else. So in this case, I'm going to request my DR event, ticket gets created, router for approval, and then I'm initiating a connectivity similar, you know, um, I'm providing a RESTful API call, I'm um, integrating with a VMware a vRealize Orchestrator or a VMware SRM, right, uh, or Ansible for additional validation, right? There's a lot of different things you can do here. 
But the goal is to get into the provisioning process where I'm initiating my DR event. So in this case, let's say we have an NSX infrastructure, uh, which is uh, there's a primary and a DR. We have NSX VXLAN between them, so we have layer two extensibility. So in this case, we can quickly identify which workload makes up Prod Financial, and we can initiate the actual DR event where um, we are modifying, in this case, edge gateways, uh, telling them that, hey, don't, um, don't use this edge gateway for ingress or make it less preferable, modify the dynamic routing to influence traffic for this workload through the DR instead of the primary data center, right? Um, and we're not doing things like changing IPs or DNS uh, information. You know, this could be a storage, um, a storage remotion, or it could be a cold migration. But again, leveraging the, the power of software-defined fabrics, um, we don't have to do things like change IPs, and we can maintain that same uh, network between both locations, right? And, and um, we could uh, combat asymmetrical flows uh, by leveraging uh, the different design options with, with um, 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 IGPs. So in this particular case, we're failing over the workload to the DR. The, the, the workload at the DR comes up. We run different uh, validation uh, and tests, make sure that the application is up and running, um, and then we fail it back, right? And again, this can be all uh, scheduled, coordinated. Maybe maybe it's a Saturday night uh, cutover, um, you know, whatever, right? This could be all pre-programmed and automated, um, and then the request would get closed. The CMDB would get updated, and the request would get completed. Now, the benefits of this particular scenario is that we're automating our disaster recovery. We're using the CMDB to our advantage. We know exactly which applications are live. We're given the requester um, in, uh, the capability of, of scheduling their own uh, DR event, whether it's IT or the actual application or requester. Uh, but obviously, it's on, on, on IT's terms, right? They're not just going to press a button and it's going to conduct a DR event, but it'll be scheduled, right? Uh, but we're leveraging CMDB information to be able to automate um, this and, and, and make it more of a successful outcome and uh, remove a lot of the human element, right? A, uh, remove a lot of the human risk out of it, right? Um, and as a result, we're decreasing the RTO. And uh, like I mentioned, we're reducing risk in this overall process. And the big thing here is we're integrating the CMDB. And one of the biggest things here for a lot of our customers is that we're meeting compliance and regulatory requirements. So, you know, a lot of our customers have auditing uh, auditors that want to know uh, that, number one, want to make sure that the application or the workload, um, you know, is DR capable, um, has been tested. You know, uh, DR events are performed every three or six months or yearly, whatever that is. Uh, and they want to know, how long did it take? How long is the application going to be down for if a true DR event happens, right? So by leveraging automation, especially um, fronting it with ServiceNow, leveraging the CMDB, selecting the applications that, um, you know, were deployed in this fashion, you know, we can streamline a lot of this capability. Now, the other thing to note is that do you have to, you know, uh, go through the application provisioning step uh, to be able to populate the CMDB with all those fields. You don't have to. It would be much more elegant if you did, so there's a, a proper workflow out of it. But you could do things like with ServiceNow's discovery, and you could discover a lot of this information and do service mapping to get a better understanding of what that application, um, you know, the constructs of the application, what the IP address of the port, where it lives, and all that information, to be able to populate a lot of these things, to be able to, um, you know, perform like the day two security operations uh, or um, uh, automating the disaster recovery. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope this was informative. And uh, if you guys want to have any more information or would like to see demos uh, or some cons uh, consultation services, uh, please reach out to us at uh, cbilse.com. Thank you.